The followers of Mohammed and their supporters in the news media and among many politicians tell the world that Mohammedan Islam is egalitarian, tolerant, just and moral, that it does not discriminate against the people of the book, the Christians and the Jews. Since most of the people in the world are ignorant of the contents of the Quran, they tend to believe these lies. Your observations and remarks are correct and I would like our listeners to be made aware of the following very relevant points before I go into the details. That according to the hadiths, the earliest followers of Muhammad who were allegedly being persecuted by the pagan Quraysh tribe to which Muhammad belonged escaped to Abyssinia where the Christian king gave them shelter and safety. That when Muhammad was a child of 12 on a trip to Syria, he met a Christian monk called Bahira, who allegedly asserted that Muhammad was the promised prophet. That the Christian uncle of Muhammad's first wife, Khadija, also allegedly asserted that he was the promised prophet. When Muhammad and his followers escaped from Mecca to Medina from the wrath of the pagan Quraysh, the Judaized Arab tribes of the Medina welcomed him as a brother monotheist, leading the Arabs away from paganism. It was while Muhammad was in the Medina among the Judaized Arabs that he instructed his followers to observe their Yom Kippur day of fasting called Ashura as it fell on the 10th day of Muharram. It was also while he was in Medina that he instructed his followers to observe the Qibla of the Judaized Arabs, that is, to pray towards the direction of Jerusalem. It was also while he was among the Judaized Arab in the Medina that many of the most important legal, moral, temporal and ritual rules of the Quran were allegedly revealed to him by Gabriel. He filled his Quran with an impressive number of stories, events and traditions that were plagiarized, pirated, plundered and or perverted almost verbatim from the non-canonical Hebrew and Christian scriptures as we have shown in several chapters of our series. Muhammad's debt, both moral and religious, to the people of the book is not only immense but it is also incontrovertible. Muhammad's infatuation with the people of the book turned into hatred when they rejected his claims that he was the prophet of Allah, who was sent to convert not only the pagans, but them also. At this, they had to draw the line. Since what Muhammad was offering in his Quran had absolutely nothing to compare with what the people of the book already had, they obviously were not willing to accept his dictates and presumptions. Muhammad was now like a rejected suitor, who had no doubt whatsoever in his own self-asserted grandiosity and claims to prophethood, and hence reacted with immense hatred and violence against the people of the book. He did so through his usual allegedly revealed verses by the angel Gabriel, hence giving his hatred and ill thoughts the power of sanctity. His Surah at tawbah number 9, in numerous verses, he recites his litany of hate-mongering and war-mongering thoughts against the pagans as well as against the people of the book. al tawbah 9.5 But when the forbidden months are past, then fight and slay the pagans wherever you find them, and seize them, beleaguer them, and lie in wait for them in every stratagem of war. Fight them and Allah will punish them by your hands. Say, if it be that your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your mates, or your kindred, the wealth that you have gained, the commerce in which you fear a decline, or the dwellings in which you delight are dearer to you than Allah or his apostle, or the striving in his cause, then wait until Allah brings about his decision and Allah guides not the rebellious. Our listeners, please notice the transition of Allah or his apostle which makes Muhammad equal in importance to Allah. al tawbah 9.29 Fight those who believe not in Allah nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden which has been forbidden by Allah and his apostle, nor acknowledge the religion of truth, even if they are of the people of the book, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves humiliated. The translator of the Quran explains this verse as follows. Jizya, the root meaning is compensation. The derived meaning, which became the technical meaning, was a poll tax levied from those who did not accept Islam, but were willing to live under the protection of Islam, and were thus 
tacitly willing to submit to its ideals being enforced in the Muslim state. There was no amount permanently fixed for it. It was an acknowledgement that those whose religion was tolerated would in their turn not interfere with the preaching and progress of Islam. Ladies and gentlemen, please be aware that the jizya was an onerous tax, in many cases amounted to almost 50% of the income of the people of the book, levied against them in their own subjugated lands to protect them. To protect them from whom? Or from what? The explanation given by the translator is bereft of logic or morality and adds insult to injury to the people of the book. Moreover, even as they pay this egregious tax, they are to be humiliated and reminded of their inferior status under the sword of Muhammadan Islam in their own conquered homelands. It was to escape these debilitating taxes and humiliations that hundreds of thousands of the subjugated peoples converted to Muhammadan Islam. 9.33 It is he who hath sent his apostle with guidance and religion of truth to proclaim it over all religions, even though the pagans may detest it. There is no ambiguity regarding the supremacist meaning of over all religions. Believing that they are predestined to conquer the world, the Arabs and Muhammadan Muslims went to war against all the surrounding civilization to mass murder, enslave, plunder, rape, destroy, and dehumanize millions of people. They did so on a colossal scale, on three continents covering almost 10 million square miles, slaughtering and enslaving hundreds of millions of people in the name of Allah. Al-Imran 3.56 as for those disbelieving infidels, Jews, Christians, and pagans, I will punish them with a terrible agony in this world and the next. They have no one to help them or save them. If anyone disputes with you about Jesus being divine, flee them and pray that Allah will curse them. O oh, you who believe, take not into your intimacy those outside your religion, Jews and Christians and pagans. They will not fail to corrupt you. This verse is one among hundreds that discriminate, incite hatred, and vilify all humans who do not believe as the Muhammadans do in Allah and Muhammad as his messenger. Al-Ma'idah 5.51 O ye who believe, take not the Jews and Christians for your friends and protectors. Our listeners should not need many more such vile verses to be convinced of Muhammad's Qur'an's racism, hate-mongering, and discriminatory attributes. Al-Ma'idah 5.57 Believers, take not for friends those who take your religion for a mockery or sport, a joke, whether among those who receive the scripture before you or among those who reject faith but fear Allah. The people of the book had every legitimate reason for the mockery and sarcasm of the Qur'an because Muhammad was trying his best at making the Qur'an sound historical, spiritual, authoritative, and divine through a continuous methodology of plagiarizing, plundering, pirating, and or perverting concepts, precepts, thoughts, and ideas from this, their scriptures, their fetishes, their traditions, as well as those of the Zoroastrians and the pagan Arabs, all the time pretending that they were new revelations. The people of the book, as well as his own Quraysh tribe, knew better, and in the end, he resolved to destroy them since they were the only witnesses to his mendacity and deception. 5.72 They do blaspheme who say Allah is Christ, the son of Miriam. They are surely disbelievers, kafara, who blaspheme and say Allah is one of three in the Trinity, for there is no God, Ilah, except one God, Ilah. If they desist not from saying this blasphemy, verily a grievous penalty will befall them, the disbelievers will suffer a painful doom. The Qur'an and the believing followers of Muhammad consider all Christians who believe in the divinity of Jesus as kafara, unbelievers, equal to the hated pagans, and hence subject to the choices of conversion, subjugation, or death. All those Christians who think that they can be friends with believing Muhammadans are deceiving themselves. Since the few verses of the Qur'an that we have so far quoted, without even referring to more of them in the hadiths, prove otherwise. For those believers and unbelievers who would like to learn much more about the status of the people of the book under Muhammad and Muslim rule, we recommend the very best in this subject. 
Dimmis and Dimmitude by the author Bat Yeor.